Damn, I love this software. It's really no secret that Affinity Designer is probably my favorite software out there. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at shadows and a few different ways that you can actually add it into your creations and a few personal ways which I prefer to do things just so hopefully it'll help you in the future. So let's get going. So we'll get straight into this. So as you can see, we've got three circles here and I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can add shadows to these. The first one, which you may also know about, is the drop shadow and inner shadow. So if we click on the first circle, if we head down to the panel here, we can go to the effects library. And in here, you've got drop shadow and you've got inner shadow. So if we tick, let's say drop shadow, and with this, you can increase the opacity of it, increase the radius, and you can see it affecting the circle here. You can increase the offset and the intensity just to give it a nice shadow. So if we leave it at something at say a subtle shadow like that and now you've also got the inner shadow as well which have basically the same attributes but affect the inside of the circle so again we can increase the opacity increase the radius increase the offset and the intensity as well so we can have something like that so that's one of the easiest ways to add a shadow into your project now with the second circle what we can do is something slightly different to add a shadow if we head into the pixel persona and go down to the paintbrush, if we grab a paintbrush with quite a small amount of flow, as well as quite a small amount of hardness and opacity, and if we lightly with a black color, just paint over the circle, we can get a nice shadowy effect like that. So that's another way that you can add one in. And what's really good with this is if we swap this over for a white color we can actually add a bit of a highlight with this quite easily as well and this is often used for people who prefer kind of the painting style it works really well for that and the third way that works really well which personally i like to use quite a lot is actually using the pen tool now it sort of works similar to using the pixel persona but instead let's say for example we want to make the same sort of shape of the shadow as these two have is using the pen tool we'd block out where we'd want the shadow to be and if we just get careless with that and put it through that and put this curve within the third circle paint this black and now what we can do is using this curve head down to the effects library and actually blur this layer we can create a really nice shadow effect which we can actually move as well now you can move these pixels around a little bit but you'd have to paint each individual thing for example the highlight on a different layer as well as the shadow on a different layer and with the first circle if you wanted to change this you'd have to go back into the effects library change the offset maybe change the angle and change which way you'd want the the shadow to be coming from whereas with this one you've got an actual physical shape so now I can move this, I can rotate it and maybe put it on this side and prefer it to look like this. And in my opinion, I found much easier and nicer results using this blur technique. Now we can do the same thing and add a highlight on this side. We won't make it completely red. But if we grab this color and just make it a lighter version of that color, a little bit orange pop this within the circle same again add a blur lift it up and now what we've got is a circle which has quite a nice and decent shadow and quite a nice highlight if I actually just spin this around because it makes sense if the highlight was above the circle instead of below it now personally like I said I prefer doing things this way because the ability to edit, re-edit, and in fact, if you think, you know what, this needs to be a little bit more, we want a little bit more highlight on there, it's quite easy to just change it around and make it something like that, as well as the overall result as well. I don't know about you, but looking at these three, that one probably looks the best. Although I could have done better with that one, but let's not, let's not talk about that. Let's leave that for another video. 
Now this could also work really well for different aspects such as this one here where we've got a face of a cat which if we really wanted to I wouldn't suggest this and because it just doesn't work we can add an inner shadow to this but it's going to create it on the inside of the actual picture and the picture is a rather large rectangle which you can see so that's not going to affect anything really that you're going to want but instead if we wanted to have a shadow just on this side of its face we could again grab the pen tool and just kind of follow along where the features really are move that over slightly we can follow it down make that a bit longer and then down to the bottom here and go right the way around with that paint that black add a blur to it and now with this what we can do also is drop the opacity and maybe change the blend mode to something like soft light and that can give a nice shadowy effect on this left side of its face now if I just show you with without the shadow and with the shadow it just can give it a bit more depth now say for example we want to change this and think you know what we want less of the outside of the face of all this hair on the background we can just grab this and reposition this so now the focus itself is on the face in the middle whereas the background is a little bit darkened and it just allows you to make a little bit of an effect to that picture so personally that's how i prefer to add shadows into things now anything that i'm creating i tend to use this way i don't tend to use the effects that often you can do the same thing with the backdrop shadow as well so with the drop shadow is if again we make a shape around the circle or better yet we could just duplicate this circle so if we control and j that circle just move it down paint this black and just make sure we've got nothing else within here put this behind and again add a blur we can now control the circle in terms of how big we want that how small we want it what shape we want it do we want more of a long shadow do we want a equal shadow however we like it we can do the same thing there but personally that's why i prefer using the make a shape and add a blur effect to it and then definitely change the blend mode as well just to add a little bit more of an effect we could go back to this one and add more of an average if you wanted it to be a bit more gray scaled just a quick recap you can use the drop shadow and inner shadow within the layer effects you can paint the actual shadow on itself using the pixel persona or you could create a shape and add a blur to it which my personal opinion i find the most useful and also the most adaptable and customizable as well especially if you think you know what it doesn't really look that good the first time you can make a slight edit to it and think you know what it looks a lot better now so that's my personal opinion so i'd definitely love to hear which one you think is the best out of these three methods i believe they all have a place within design and part of it is going to be personal choice as well but let me know down in the comments which one you think and basically that's it for this video so as always make sure you're following me on instagram twitter and twitch all those links are in the description below and any questions that you have about affinity designer itself drop those in the comments i'll try my best to answer as many as i can as well as potentially making a video if it's something that needs a bit more explaining that you can't really do with a comment section but again thank you for watching i have been brown bear i'll see you in the next video